We are pleased now to report to you that Congressman Lamar Smith joins us to talk about this report. Lamar, you called it the biggest jailbreak in history. And I know that there are those who think that uh, those of us who have been involved in politics are perhaps prone to exaggeration. But I got to tell you, from my perspective, Congressman, it looks like you're right on target. Uh, J.D., good to be with you and a former colleague, and you're an expert on this subject yourself. Uh, but it, it's not exaggerating to say it's the equivalent of a jailbreak. When you have this administration or any administration uh, releasing 36,000 individuals who have been convicted of 88,000 crimes and putting them back into our communities, back onto the streets, uh, that is something that goes almost beyond comprehension that any administration would do that. And uh, it is the equivalent of a jailbreak because these people are being released. They're not being deported as they should be. In some instances, a few instances, they may be required to be released. But it, our information is that the vast majority of these people, these convicts, as you say, these criminals, uh, have been released and they didn't need to be released. They could have been detained or they could have been de deported, which is exactly what should have happened. Lamar, here is what concerns so many people, and I know you hear it in your Texas district, but a lot of people around the country see a, a disconnect on this with Washington because even as we see this example of non-enforcement, you had the Senate gang of eight with their amnesty bill. You've had yeah. Speaker Boehner talking about, hey, we're going to get immigration reform done this year based on these revelations. Should the United States even be considering immigration reform? Right. What we ought to be doing first, and we are not doing, is enforcing our current immigration laws. Uh, this is an administration that has ignored immigration laws, undermined immigration laws, and then tried to make immigration laws through executive orders. So, J.D., maybe in one sense we shouldn't be surprised. I mean, this is an administration that's been trying to give administrative amnesty to people in the country illegally. They have, uh, by what they call a prosecutorial discretion, uh, released people back into the streets or not brought charges against individuals. This is an administration that's not serious about enforcing immigration laws. So when they suddenly now, in the last year, uh, release another 36,000 uh, individuals who have been convicted of crimes who should not be in our country and uh, release them instead of deporting them, um, maybe that's just part of their mindset. Maybe that's part of their uh, way that they look at immigration laws, which is completely contrary to the best interests of the American people. These are individuals who, as we found out, will commit additional crimes. These are individuals who are going to be hurting innocent Americans. And the administration needs to be held accountable. This policy is directly uh, on the doorstep of the White House. They are responsible for this decision, and they are responsible, at least indirectly, for a lot of innocent Americans either being killed or sexually molested or getting illegal drugs uh, or being harmed in other ways. And it is just absolutely inexcusable. Well, Congressman Smith, John Bachman sitting alongside J.D. here, wanted to ask yes. you, in light of this information coming out now, if you or anybody else in the caucus has had any discussion with House Speaker John Boehner, anybody else in leadership about what's going to happen moving forward with we just hearing the yeah. Speaker recently in his home district kind of making fun of the caucus for not willing to uh, do something on immigration yeah. reform. Well, I have heard the Speaker and other of our Republican leaders say that we can't trust the President to enforce current immigration laws, and I agree with them on that. If we can't trust the President to enforce current immigration laws, and in fact, if they're undermining immigration laws, they, the President can certainly not be trusted to enforce future immigration laws, and I think that this absolutely does slow down the process towards any kind of an amnesty bill. I mean, this is just another example of the administration not enforcing current laws, so why in the world would we trust him to enforce uh, future laws? Do you, just, do you, do you uh, think the Speaker's still hell-bent on getting something done with us learning about this information now? Well, I'll take the Speaker at his word. He doesn't trust the President. We don't trust the President. I don't see how we can move forward with any kind of immigration reform if you can't trust the administration to enforce immigration laws. So uh, a, this example is just another one. This is the example of 36,000 uh, criminal aliens being released back into our streets. I mean, this should confirm for anybody who had any doubts whatsoever that we could not trust the president. By the way, it's actually worse than this 36,000. There's another 68,000 individuals 
uh, who were charged with crimes, who were in our jails last year, who were also released without any effort to deport them. So I think this is going to get worse and worse when all the details come out. I, I requested uh, the facts and the figures from the Department of Homeland Security last February, and they still have not given them to us. The Center for Immigration Studies that came up with these, this information uh, that we have right now, uh, this is information that didn't come from the Department of Homeland Security. They still refuse us to give us, refuse to give us the information. When we get to all the facts, my guess is going to be a lot worse than we even think it is. So again, to amplify this, uh, we're talking about really over 100,000 people who have uh, clear examples of people in the wrong who have not been deported. And again, the administration not being forthcoming with the information. Now, Lamar, uh, as much as I'd like to stay with this topic, uh, the headlines necessitate we talk about something else as well, and that is the growing VA scandal. The hospital down in San Antonio, we got reports there from uh, the state I represented in Congress, Phoenix reports there. It appears this is nationwide in scope. So Eric Shinseki is in front of the Senate today. In your opinion, Lamar Smith, should VA Secretary Shinseki resign? At this point, J.D., I don't know how much he knew. He certainly should have known about the cover-up of this going on in the VA. He should have known that, uh, that doctors were being told uh, to falsify the records and to cover up how long veterans had to wait for their health care procedures. And uh, we got information this morning that this kind of cover-up has been going on for six years. I don't know what the administrator of the VA knew or didn't know. He certainly should have known. But if he knew about it in any way, shape, or form, then he has to take a responsibility for it. He has a wonderful veterans record himself. I can't imagine that he knew about it. Uh, but at this point, uh, no one has been held accountable, and a lot of people do need to be held accountable. This has been nationwide. It's been systemic. Uh, it's been going on for years, uh, and yet uh, so far uh, nobody has resigned, nobody has been fired, and that is inevitable whether it goes to the very top or not. I don't know at this point, but someone needs to take responsibility at the top. We'll have to leave it right there. Lamar Smith, Texas Republican Congressman, we thank you very much for your time, and we appreciate your insights. Shocking news, more about uh, the outlawed nature of our border ahead. You're watching America's Forum.